This video is timestamped, so if you want to skip any chapters or fast forward to any chapters, just look in the description. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can easily make your own PNG tuber. This is basically like a little character that can be edited into your videos or your streams or whatever to substitute for a face cam. They're often compared to VTubers, although PNG tubers have a simpler setup that demands less from your computer and they're often like a lower budget or even considered a starter option. First step is to decide on a design for your Sona. For me, this was already sorted. I always liked the design and I always had some intention to use it. Secondly, and this is like the longest stage, is you want to draw it. But instead of separating things out on layers like you usually do, like a layer for the flat colors, a layer for the shading, a layer for the line art, you want to separate every feature that will move independently on a different layer. I was on Procreate and I was using the group feature where you swipe on several layers and then group them together to keep things organized. And you can name the layers and the groups, which is super helpful, and then flatten everything together at the end onto one layer each. So for example, you want the eyes to be on one layer, you want the closed eyes to be on one layer, open on another, you want to draw the entire shiny bald head so that when things move on top of it, there's not just a big gap that you didn't draw anything underneath there. I put the fringe on a separate layer, the flyaway strands at the side on a separate layer, the top of her hair on a separate layer, and the pigtails on another so that they could all move independently and bounce around differently as she speaks. I also put the front of the tassel on her jumper onto a different layer to the back of the tassel. I put the open and close mouths on different layers, the eyebrows, just anything that you want to move gets its own layer. After I drew all of this, it took me about 40 minutes um, while I was in an on online lecture. Um, the next step is to flatten everything. So I duplicated the file and flattened everything into one layer for each piece so that would move independently. Then you have to export all of these layers individually as PNGs with transparent backgrounds. This is super easy in Procreate because there's a button to just do this for you. You don't have to save each layer individually, but if you're using another art program, then rest in peace, my dude. Then go to Google and type in PNG tuber plus or scroll to the description and find the top link there if you're worried that you've not found the right one. This should take you to a website called itch.io. When you download the program it will come zipped so you'll have to extract it, then open the folder everything was extracted into and you'll find this exe file, double click it to open it. My computer said it was a virus initially so I had to bypass my security to open it but it's not a virus this is just a common problem with downloading anything from itch.io. It will be treated by your computer as suspicious. Once you open the program, you'll be greeted with this little paper guy who bounces as you speak into your microphone. Go to the bottom right, there's a pencil icon. Click it to enter the editor. Click the body of the paper guy. A menu will come up on the right with a bin icon. Click that bin icon and that should delete everything. Once your screen is clear, press this little eye down in the bottom right corner to bring up the controls. Then, as you'll see written here, you can press the escape key. This will bring up the file app data underscore user PNG tuber plus. This is where you need to make a new folder. Name the folder whatever you want to call your model, then drag all of the PNG files you made earlier into this folder. Once you're done, close the folder screen. Now in the program, in the top left, press add new sprite. This will bring up the folder we just went to. Go into your PNG tubers named folder and start importing every PNG layer one by one. If the layers are too big for your screen, hold control on your keyboard and scroll using your mouse wheel. The controls are in the bottom right as I said earlier. Once everything is imported, your model should be all here bouncing as you speak into your microphone. Press the closed eye in the top right corner to see all of the layers of your model. Hopefully you should have named these to make your life easier because for some reason mine weren't named even though I did name them all. Thank you Procreate. 
If any layers are not in the right place, click on them and then use the E and Q buttons to reorder the layers. Again, all of the controls are in the bottom right. In the box on the left, it will show the layer number when you select that layer. Once everything is layered as it should be in the correct order, congrats, you're ready to start rigging. The most important thing to do is to select the eyes open and the eyes closed layer and you're going to go to this toggle in the left box here, click on this button until it shows eyes open or eyes closed. Anything with the eyes open toggle on will be visible when your character's eyes are open. Anything with the closed toggle on will only be visible when your character is blinking. You can do the same with the mouth, mouth open and mouth closed. When you speak into your microphone, everything on that mouth open toggle will be visible. Now, you might notice these layers are kind of transparent. When you click the X in the top left to leave edit mode, everything will look normal as it will in the final product. You can use the bars in the bottom left to adjust the speaking. The top blue bar is how long your character's mouth will stay open after you've stopped making noise. The bottom green one is the noise threshold you need to reach before the mouth opens. Just play around with them. Now that's basically all you need to do, but you can go further. To make the layers move separately when you talk, fiddle with the settings in the left box. Trust me, it's really intuitive and does not need much explaining, just try it. Let's start from the top. Sprite frames and animation is if you want to add animated parts of your model. I'll cover that a bit later in the video because it's its whole own thing. Check the timestamps to see when. Squashes the rater layer squashes, either stretching outwards for positive values or squashing inwards for negative values when you speak. Rotational drag is how much the layer will rotate to either the left or the right. General drag, which is above these two, is how much the animation lags behind the movement, so how slow it is. You can use this to add a feeling of gravity if you wish. X and Y frequency and amplitude is about passive movement. Amplitude is how much the layer moves from left to right or up and down, and frequency is how quickly it moves. You can use this to add passive animations like the chest rising up and down slightly to indicate breathing, or a tail wagging around in a circle behind your character, or any other floating appendages, anything you can think of. At the bottom is the maximum and minimum rotation. If you want something to rotate around a point, like I said I wanted my tassels to rotate around where they're attached, not around the center, you have to change the offset. So when you select a layer, there's a tiny little red, green, blue cross in the middle, and that is the offset point. Hold O and then use the WASD keys to move it to where you want the thing to rotate around. And then said layer will now rotate around this point instead of rotating around the middle of the image. Once you're done fiddling, press save avatar and give it a name. You can load the avatar from the file icon later. So let's go back and talk about animated sprite sheets now. So here's how to add sprite sheets to make specially animated parts. The first thing you'll need to do is make all the frames of the animation and then to export them as usual. Make sure they're all placed as they would be in relation to the rest of the model so that when you import them they'll be in the correct size and position in relation to everything else. Then take every frame of your animation and turn it into a sprite sheet. To do this you can type into Google sprite sheet maker and then go to code and web, link will be in the description, clear the sprites, add your PNG files and then change the layout to horizontal and save it. Import this sprite sheet into your program, select it and then change the sprite frames slider on the left to the number of frames in your animation and then adjust the animation speed to your liking. 
so you can basically use this to add custom animations to your model. For example, for me, I've used this to add more animated mouth movements. You can add whatever your creativity desires. That's basically everything, but now for costumes. You may notice at the bottom there are the numbers 1 to 10. This is the costume layer. You can control this with the numbers on your keyboard. For example, press 1 and your character will start wearing costume number 1. If you deselect the other costumes, you can make certain layers only appear with certain costumes. So, for example, with Luna here, right now we're on costume one, so everything that is a happy expression image, um, so that's her happy eyebrows, her happy closed mouth, her happy open mouth, that is all under costume one. So when I press the one button on my keyboard, we get happy Luna. If I press 2, you'll notice that I drew her a different set of eyebrows, a different open mouth, and a different closed mouth. So, 1, 2, on costume 3, I have uh, some extra stuff on there as well. So again, changing the eyebrows, the mouth, those little, um, I don't know what they're called, but you know like in anime, they have those angry expression mark things. This is her sad, I've changed the, you can see I've even changed the head for this um, to give that blue tint and then we have the embarrassed. So when I press the numbers on my keyboard I can change what is going on. So I just discovered a little bit more about this program which is that you can change the gravity and the bounce force so you can change, whoa, Okay, if you lower the bounce gravity, then she will bounce around more, like she's in space when I'm talking. If I lower the bounce force, then she's basically just um, shaking a little tiny bit when I talk. The more that you open this up, the more that she's going to get more animated. But if you don't want her to bounce up and down as much as she's speaking, we can up this bounce gravity, and then it will just keep her in place like this so she'll be bouncing with some force or maybe not that much force and she'll kind of just stay in place you can also turn this all the way down and then she just flies away bye bye into, into up to the moon and she keeps going and she never comes back down let's slam her back down and then that happens. So if you want her to be more floaty like this, you can have a little bit more bounce force, a little bit more bounce gravity. It's another thing to play with. I think I probably said it, bounce gravity a little bit higher so that she's not jumping up and down so much whenever I'm speaking. But I think if we turn the bounce force up so she's still animated, but she's kind of staying in place and it's a little bit less maybe distracting than it was before whenever I'm talking so that's also something to play with. There's costume bounce which you can turn on. I think that means that when you switch it over there's a little bounce animation for when you switch over the costumes. I didn't know this, look. So that's cute. Those are some more things. I don't know what texture filtering is. I have no clue what that is. Um, you can also change how fast she blinks and how often she blinks. So this makes her blink a lot. If I turn this up, you can see the blink speed change. So there's some other things for you to be messing around with as well in this program. And finally, before we wrap this up, I just want to mention one more thing. If you go to the settings here at the top, you can change the background colour so you can make it uh, any of these colours. Um, that you can green screen out or you can make it a specific color or you can make it transparent which makes it easy to overlay um, this into OBS and have it sit in the bottom of your corner of your screen while you're streaming or whatever 
Um, so there's that as well and I hope that gives you guys a really comprehensive view of everything that you can do in this program. If you found this tutorial helpful, comment a star in the comment section. Liking and commenting is the only way the algorithm really knows my videos are worth showing to other people. I would love to take this model further in the future, now I know how to, including even more expressions and maybe even like hands, full body poses, but for now she's fine for my purposes. If you would like to see me using her on this channel, or if you'd like to see when I upgrade her in the future, stick around and subscribe. And if you use this tutorial to make a PNG tuber, please, please, please comment and tell us where we can find you. I would love to see all of your models. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.